In this demonstration, I am going to show you how polar and nonpolar molecules are affected by static electricity. You're learning polar and nonpolar molecules by drawing Lewis dot diagrams and understanding their geometry, and using either dipole moments or the idea of symmetry, people are coming to the idea that molecules are either polar or nonpolar. But there are real life applications to molecules that are polar and nonpolar. You'll learn that like dissolves like. Polar things that have a positive and negative partial ends will attract other things that are partial and negative. Case in point, water and oil. We, everyone knows from general life experiences that oil and water don't mix. And part of the reason is that water and oil have different types of attractive forces. Water is a polar molecule. As you can see from your chemistry class or mine, water has a bent shape or angular. It's sp3 hybridized and it has a dipole moment, that's the arrow pointing to the negative direction. Those two lone pairs bend the molecule down by Vesper theory into a bent shape that's not symmetrical. And the negative end of the oxygen, okay, the partial negative end, makes this side the negative part of the molecule. And this is the positive, or partial positive, and we have a dipole moment. Polar molecule, it's got a polar bond and is not symmetrical, therefore it's polar. So water is going to have a positive end and a negative end. Now, oil, as we can see, is a hydrocarbon. Now, for a couple of different reasons, in regions chemistry, we consider hydrocarbons, okay, the carbon-hydrogen bond to be polar because they're two different atoms. But in truth, the rest of the whole world considers a carbon-to-hydrogen bond to be nonpolar because their difference in electronegativity is very similar. So there's no dipole moments here. Therefore, it's not a polar molecule. Or you can say because of the symmetry of the very little polarity of the bonds between the carbon and H, because of the symmetry, the polar bonds cancel out. And oil is a nonpolar molecule, so it doesn't have what water has, which is those slight negatives and positives. So oil will not attract water. Okay, In theory, it attracts it a little bit, but not as much. So water and oil don't mix very well. They're emissible. But there's another cool thing I can do here. What I'm going to do with these two is see how they're affected by electrical charge or static electricity. So let me put this down, and we'll start with the oil first. Okay, so I'm going to put this down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you look at the streams here. Okay, so I am going to take my oil, separatory funnel, and I'm going to move it over. That's closer. Okay, I'm going to switch my flasks, keep them same. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, as you can see, some fur, might be some cat fur, sorry for those cat lovers out there, and a rod, and all I'm going to do is electrically charge this rod. I'm just going to increase the static electricity or increase the static charge in this rod by just pulling some electrons off the fur, and kind of like walking across the carpet. Okay, now, this is charged, and now I'm going to drop a stream, a very small stream of oil. And now I'm going to put this charged rod next to it. And as you can see, there's very little, if any, effect that this rod has on this stream. And it's because oil doesn't have a true negative or positive position. It's not a polar molecule. It's not affected by the negative charge that I'm bringing toward this. Okay, so there really is no effect by this charged rod. Okay, now let's do water, which we just talked about as a polar molecule. So I'm going to pull back, bring the water separatory funnel here. Okay, and let's do the water. Make sure I'm pouring water into the water beaker because they don't separate very well. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Take my charge rod, make sure that I've got this nice and charged, like walking across a carpet on a dry day. Okay, same reason why we have, okay, Thunderbolts, air masses moving across the earth. Okay, I got this charged. All right, now I'm going to stream of water. Now watch the difference here. Okay, I'm going to put this charge rod next to it. Now you can see already it's moving. The positive part of the stream is attracted to my negative rod. Clearly, there's something to this polarity of this liquid. Because of the no negative or positive end, in this case the positive end of the water, it's making the stream clearly move and like this. Whoa, look at that craziness. So clearly water's got something. There's something to being a polar molecule. Okay, 
So it's not just the things we do in pencil and paper. There are applications to this, uh, and a teacher can go over many of those. Okay, hope you enjoyed that.